Welcome back to the channel. We're going over what Powell was saying going into Thursday and Wednesday, which ultimately led to the massive drop on the stock market and potentially a stock market crash going into the next few weeks. We need to be talking about this specifically, and I got some big things in overall viewpoints into what you can expect going into this week as well. Like, subscribe, do what you got to do. Let's get to it. So what we're looking at right here first is going to be Fed Powell talking about the 50 BPS hike. And this is the big thing. So people took this as he was saying it was on the table and he used a lot of rhetoric. So when you're looking at a lot of these articles, it's very misleading because when you read this, he would say, I would say the 50 BPS hike is on the table for the May meeting. And he's kind of insinuating around it and they're not attacking the rhetoric he was really using. So when you, you look at this, it's kind of uh, it's it's almost like he's saying the same thing they've been saying in the past and you're like well maybe they're gonna do 25 but when you come back over here and read this article he really goes into more depth than some of the words he was saying so you can definitely see the bias in some of these articles saying that maybe we won't do it now maybe it's later maybe it's too quick but when you see what Powell was really saying it is appropriate in my view to be moving a little bit more quickly and, and why are they talking about that it's because inflation's hit an 8.5 level which is absolutely astonishing the way that we're pumping up right now we look, we're gonna look at mortgage rates here in a second but you can see what's really happening Powell statements essentially meet the market expectations that the fed will depart from its usual 25 bp hike again which is you're seeing an unbiased view here, and then you go more to investing.com, you can go to, to routers, and routers is pretty good at describing what's really there, black and white. But you're seeing different viewpoints, and it's really concerning when you're not really getting the truth, and you don't really know where to run with it. Now, based on just common sense and logic, you're going to see they need to start doing this because they got to reach that level of 2.5 to 3.5 total, and they're only sitting at 0.5 right now. There's six more potential hikes for the rest of the year. I mean, common sense tells us 0.5 average gets to 3.5 in a year. That's pretty big. The expectations for a 50 BPS move in May rose to 97.6. And it's worth mentioning that number was below 30% roughly in the beginning of April. Just so you know, this number was below 30%. It's rose almost 70% since then, almost capping out. So everyone's expecting that. That's very big. They're also saying the Fed has priced this in now. But then we're going to mortgage rates and look what's happened here since the beginning of the year. We've seen this go just absolutely insane. Beginning of the year, about January 1st, 3.27%. Where are we sitting now? 5.4% rising at rapid rates. Very similar, very similar to what we saw back in you know 2000 and the 08 era. This is very similar instances happening here, except inflation is hitting a massive level right now. But going into this week, there's potential for some upside, and I'm going to explain why. You see, as we come in here, you got to look at earnings, and these are all the earnings for this week, and you're getting your big boys. These are the big tech names. You had Tesla, you had Netflix last week, and we saw how the tone was set. We're going to look at the chart here in a second. We saw the market react very good from Tesla's earnings, but then ultimately come back down. We saw Netflix get absolutely tanked, and it brought the market down with it. So looking at what's going on now, what am I looking at for this week? I, I, you have your big name, Consumer Staples, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, those, not concerned about them. What I'm looking at more is Microsoft, Alphabet, Visa, GM, Spotify, even Boeing, but they should do pretty well just based on things happening right now. Meta, which is Facebook, PayPal, Ford, Qualcomm, Pinterest. You get all these big names coming in here, Twitter, Apple, Amazon, Roku, Intel. You're having semiconductor, all these very big names, and I want to elaborate that I think oil will do very good. If I miss it on any of the rest of the video, oil should do very good. So if it dips at all, oil is definitely a buying opportunity for myself personally. But if you see these happening here, there's big question marks because if you come out with bad earnings, what is going to happen? The big question mark last week was, what would happen to the economy last week if Tesla posted bad earnings? Because we were already seeing such a knife drop. The only reason we got that dead cat bounce was because of Tesla's earnings. Let's get into those charts. All right, so what we're going to look at here is first going to be the S&P, and we're going to keep it extremely, extremely, extremely simple. I have the key price action ranges marked out, and this may concern you, this may scare you, but this is just the honest truth of what's happening. So on the S&P, it's a bit a little bit more confusing, but you can see we've been testing the same levels over and over. 
over. We don't move these ranges. We keep them exactly where they are because price action shows you where the key levels are, right? So people come in here and they say technical analysis doesn't matter. Well, we're not using triangles. We're not using crazy indicators and with momentum. We're using volume where buyers are stepping in and we're using key levels where sellers are sitting at as well. That's all we're using here because that's all that really matters. So what's really happening here is you're trading in these channels. So you'll come down and when you break below this channel here, you'll trade back into this block and then you'll kind of ping pong back and forth. And if you get a break, you might come back to that key level there. But ultimately, it's been back and forth in these zones. But what happened going into Friday is you started ignoring all the liquidity in between the zones. So you see how you're getting chop in this range here. But look what happens as you start to progress into Friday and it gets very concerning because it's showing the potential for that just ultimate drop that we're looking at right now. So you start dropping from key levels of 450 all the way down to 425, roughly a 25 point move on S&P in under 24 hours. And we're looking back at those February lows potentially, and that's where I'm targeting around 410 locally to about 415. That's my next zone for us to get to. So if you start breaking back below 425, 424, you're coming down to that zone. And you can also see even with this upside pressure move, What's going on here? You're declining in volume. So what does that tell us? As you're declining in volume to that upside move, it is showing you that the buyers are not strong. And then as you see the breakout level stepping in here, as we grab that, you can see the breakout happens about right here. And guess who takes control? Where do you finally see a breakout of the trend? It's to the sell side. The sellers start to take control and they start to really pump in the volume and what happens you go from 450 all that upward move is almost eliminated in the day boom right back down let's look at the nasdaq looking at the nasdaq it's even a cleaner chart to really look at because the nasdaq which represents tech shows you that you never even had an upside breakout over the past two weeks. If you really get in here and you look at what's happening, you couldn't get above 14.3, which if you've been watching the videos that we're posting and talking about every day, then you would know 14.3 is the level you have to watch. You get above 14.3 and the sky's the limit, you could push back to 1500, but you never could. One, two, three, four touches of that level, clear rejections, easy shorting opportunities over the past two weeks. And since you got rejected there, Obviously, I keep saying it. The goal is a retest again of those March, February lows, which is locally around 13 flat. And you're going to get it. You're already almost there. You kind of bounced off a 13.4, didn't get any love, and you're just sitting in the middle of this range now. Again, you have to be expecting and waiting for that touch. But going into this week of earnings, it's worth mentioning that what you probably we're seeing was a lot of de-risking. So what you saw with Netflix was a very big concern on the market because you saw big tech show that they were influenced not only by supply chain, overall metrics of inflation, but also by Russia because they're kind of blacklisting and all these companies here are blacklisting Russia. Visa, they shut down all their credit cards going on in Russia. So they could have a terrible earnings and I would project that they show significant slowdown on growth based on that. Now the credit card limits, so that's going to be kind of scary looking at the US credit spending, but looking at that as general, the overall growth is going to be depleted. Advertising spent on Google, it's going to be down. Looking over here at Facebook, I anticipate WhatsApp taking massive hit, and it was something I wasn't thinking of, but you're seeing influencers on Instagram, Facebook, going and having mental breakdowns because they can't post anymore. Guess what? Meta is going to take a hit, specifically on the ad spend level. That's the concern there. PayPal, another big spender there. These are all concerns for me right now going into this specifically. Now, you have Roku, Intel, some of these down here. The thing with semiconductor, sim you're having the supply chain shortage, and that's the big concern there. But Roku, we saw what happened to Netflix. So we can only imagine what happens to Roku with their overall subscribers there as well. These are all concerns relative in the market, and we need Need to really be taking a broader look at these. Keep an eye on MasterCard as well. MasterCard Visa, I believe they're in trouble based on overall growth and they could take a major, major hit. But what I think you were seeing going into this week and seeing at the end of the week were people taking their money out of their stocks and overall hedging their positions based on the potential of terrible, terrible earnings. So when you go into this week, am I coming into this week with a major short position? I think there's downside level, so I'm automatically looking for a little bit more downside going into Tuesday. However, I'm not coming into it full sending my account 
down to the bottom because we've already made such a massive level push. I mean, if you really think about this, you've had a thousand point move on the NASDAQ in under 24 hours. Absolutely astonishing to really see. I don't think people understand the level of that type of move and what's really happening here and how volatile we really are. And when you look at VIX, you can see the volatility indexes are smashing up and breaking out pushing back towards that $35 region once again. So you got to keep your head on a swivel and be concerned with what's really going on here. However, if earnings come out in any type of positive outlook, you could easily start to see a little bit of a rebound. Now, broader scope of the market, does it continue to crash? Longer term, yes. Inflation's hitting, BPS hikes are coming rapidly. You're going to have more overall transitioning and inversions going on with the yields, which we're not covering today. But my concern here is 13K touch here on NASDAQ. If you bounce there, awesome. If you break below this, it's going to get ugly and you're going to be testing other lows. And I think actual stocks could take an absolute hit going into this week. So keep your head on a swivel, be safe. More content is coming. I ask you to consider to do two things here on the channel, liking and subscribing because I'm posting all the time, only the information you need to know on the market to keep your account safe. Have a good one, traders.